What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to do the following integral in two different methods. Namely, the integral of 3x squared minus 12x plus 11 all over the product of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 dx. <coughs> so, let's jump into our first method. Let's see. So since in this fraction, in this fraction, the denominator has already factored out. Our first method is going to do the partial fraction uh, decomposition, which is we're going to break it into three different fractions. Something over x minus one plus something over x minus two plus something over x minus three. Now, for the partial fraction, after we write out our denominators, of course, we need to figure out what we should put on the top of each fraction. So let's use the ha uh, most handy method that we, uh, we probably have known, which is called the covering method. What, uh, what does that do? Or how, uh, how does it work? Well, for example, for x minus one term, we're going to look at the original function here and we're going to cover the x minus one term so that now we only have the remaining part. Then we're going to replace the x by one and find out what the value is and that will give us the numerator of x minus one term. So let me use the red pen to, uh, to do the scratch work. We get three times one squared minus 12 times one plus 11 all over one minus two times one minus three, which is if we simplify, we get three minus 12 plus 11 all over negative one times negative two. And if we simplify it again, we get two over two, which is one. Great. We found the constant term here, which is one. And let's do the, <clears throat> which is one. So let's do the, mm, let's do the same for the other two terms. So for x minus two, we're covering x minus two in the denominator. And then we'll replace the x by two and get three times two squared minus 12 times two plus 11 all over two minus one times two minus three. And we will get negative one over one, which is equal to one here. Excellent. <clears throat> so for the last one, brilliant. Nice. So if we use the addition property of integrals, we get the integral of dx over x minus one plus dx over x minus two plus dx over x minus three. And if we take the integral of it, we will just simply get ln of the denominator. And again, Perhaps we should just double check with the chain rule, but the denom since the denominator is x minus one, the derivative of that is just one. So we don't have to put any constant outside or divide by any constant. And this is the same for the other two integrals. And don't forget, we need to put the plus C at the end. And that is it. We get our answer. And so we have the, uh, we found the integral uh, is equal to ln of x minus one plus ln of x minus two plus ln of x minus three plus some constant c. Great. And that's it for the first method. All right. So in the last board, we used the first method, which is partial fraction decomposition inside before we take the integral to find out the 
integral is equal to the following. This time, we're going to use a different method and see what... Uh, this time, we're going to use a different method and see if we'll be able to get the same results back. Okay? So here we go. For the second method, instead of doing with partial fractions, this time, I'm going to multiply all the terms in the denominator before I see... Uh, <clears throat> this time, I'm going to take the product of all the factors in the denominator to see what we can do. So, let's do the scratch work aside. We have x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3, which gives us, let's do the foiling. x minus 1 times x minus 2 will give us x squared minus 1x minus 2x, which is minus 3x, plus negative 1 times negative 2, which is positive 2, plus 2. And then we're going to multiply with x minus 3. So let's try to distribute one more time. We get x cubed, and then minus 3x times x, which is 3x squared, and then minus another 3x squared, so we get minus 6x squared, and then let's see, we have 2 times x, which is 2x, and then we have negative 3x times negative 3, so the negatives cancel out, we get positive 9x, so we get 2x plus 9x, which is plus 11x. And finally, we are taking the product of the constant terms, which gives us minus 6. Great! Let's write it back in. The denominator is now equal to x to the third power minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. Great. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Hmm. Seems like we have two. Pro uh, seems like we have two polynomials, which are very messy here. So why don't we try the use up? Okay. And again, let's take a look. The polynomial in, in the the polynomial on bottom has the degree 3, where the polynomial on top has a degree 2. So perhaps we should choose the polynomial with bigger power because we know that if we take on the derivative of mm, that, we will get something smaller. So let's see. Let u be the bottom, which is x to the third power minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. Then if we take the derivative on both sides, we get du equals 3x squared, which is from the x cubed, minus the derivative of 6x squared, which is 12x, plus the derivative of 11x, which is 11, minus the constant term, and the derivative of a constant is, of course, obviously zero, no matter which variable we're taking with respect to. And then don't forget, we need to put the dx at the end. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see. On the right-hand side, we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 11 with respect to dx. Do we have it here? We do. We actually have it in the numerator, and it is actually in the exact same form. So that means we can now replace the whole numerator by just du and the denominator by, let's see, u. And again, now we're going to take the integral of 1 over u, and the integral of 1 over u is just ln of absolute value of u and with the plus constant term. Finally, we're going to substitute back what u is into our expression. And again, u is this product here, but this product 
is from the denominator, which is same as the product of these three terms. So we can just rewrite it as ln of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 plus the constant term. All right, that's it. Now you may have asked, wait a second, we're using two different methods in the same problem, but our expression don't look the same. What's going on? Are they really the same answer? Let's see. In our second method, we get the final answer, ln of the product plus the constant term outside. Where in method one, we said the integral is equal to the sum of three uh, ln terms plus the constant. They don't look the same, but are they? Well, remember, one of the properties of logarithms say, uh, says if we have the product inside of ln or log, it would be the same as saying the sum of all the lns of each term. Meaning, we can rewrite this product here into the sum in this form, ln of each term. So in fact, these two are actually the same answer. Pretty cool, huh? <clears throat> so, which method do you like more? Using partial fraction de uh, de decomposition or using use of? Uh, please leave your comment below so that I can see which one you would like to use more. And that's it for this video. If you didn't subscribe my channel, please subscribe it. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like. And you can go to check out more of my videos from my channel. I'll see you next time.